day, the said television company of Western Armenia represents all the most important events of these days. Today's broadcast, Sons of Western Armenia, Hovanes Avakian, on the issue of the Armenians of Western Armenia, Artak Beglarian's message to the U.S. Ambassador, U.N. General Assembly Special Advisor on the Prevention of Genocide calls for free movement along the Berzo Road, the Western Armenian government's response to press conferences by former Eastern Armenian Foreign Minister Vartan Oskanyan and current Foreign Minister Ararat Mirzoyan. Delegation from the Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Republic of India visited a memorial to the victims of the genocide against Armenians. Understanding Parajanov's world through the language of dance, the pomegranate color project will be an opportunity to familiarize ourselves with Parajanov's art from different angles. Havanes Avakian was born into the family of Sosik Avakian and Angela Hazaran in 1973. He studied at school number 176, named after Mahar, and later attended the special physics mathematics schools named after Artasha Shahinyan, from which he graduated with a gold medal. During this time, he also pursued professional football training, took guitar lessons, and participated in numerous Olympiadas, achieving excellent results. Havanes Avakian holds degrees from four higher education education institutions. From 1990 to 1995, he studied at the Department of Finance and Credit at the University of Economics, earning a red degree. Between 1995 to 1996, he studied at the Sarksia Military University, graduating with a red diploma. He continued his studies at the Frunze Military Academy from 2001 to 2003, again earning a red diploma. Lastly, from 2017 to 2019, he attended the Military Academy of the General Staff of the Armed Forces of the Russian Federation, a prestigious institution of military significance where he finished with a gold medal. When the war broke out, he immediately rushed to the Madaris and actively participated in intense battles. Despite being surrounded, he demonstrated professionalism and managed to escape unharmed thanks to his efforts and the support of volunteers. Hovane Savakyan played a significant role in the battles of Martaget, Jerakan, Hadrut, Martuni, and Shushi. Witnesses attest that Hovane Savakyan, regardless of his rank or position, always fought on the front lines with the weapons in hand, leading the charge against the enemy. Tragically, on November 7, he fell alongside a fellow soldier as a result of enemy fire from a Muha weapon on the outskirts of Shushi. Vavilov traveled to five continents to study the world's food ecosystem, considering it a mission for all mankind. He conducted genetic selection experiments to enhance agricultural efficiency. According to Vavilov, Armenia is one of the centers of origin for plants. He observed that natural plant selection took place in the mountains, where the original aspects were preserved. Despite the challenging conditions of revolution, anarchy, and famine in Russia at that time, he managed to achieve significant results in this field. Between in 1925 to 1930, Professor Tumanyan from the Agricultural Institute of Armenia discovered the birthplace of single grain and two grain wild wheat in the western and southwestern regions surrounding Yerevan. Around the same time, Araratyan also succeeded in his search for wild wheat. Tumanyan published his discovery in 1930, which caused a sensation and caught Vavilos' attention. Besides Palestine, which was long considered the birthplace of wheat, other wild weeds were found that observed their special place in Vavilov's collection. Fascinated by Tumanyan's discovery, Vavilov decided to organize a special trip to Armenia. Upon hearing the news, Nikolai Vavilov promptly traveled with his group to Yerevan and Baku, with plans to explore other areas in the region at a later date. During his visit, Vavilov confirmed his belief in wild wet and declared that Armenia should be regarded as one of the birthplaces of global crops. In terms of wild wet, only four types have been identified worldwide worldwide, showcasing significant national diversity. 1. Urartian wild wheat, 2. Single grain wild wheat, 3. Ararat wild wheat, and 4. 2. Grain Syro-Palestinian wheat. The first three species mentioned grew in Armenia. I am sorry that the U.S. Ambassador to Armenia ignores the most important collective right to self-determination of the people of Artsakh and does not seem to understand or care about Azerbaijan's policy of ethnic cleansing. Artak Beglarian, advisor to the former Minister of State of the Republic of Artsakh, wrote about this on his Facebook page. It is clear that no security or rights can be guaranteed under Baku's dictatorial regime, and such false statements only encourage further crimes. Happy U.S. Independence Day, Madam Ambassador, on this symbol 
Republic Day allow me to have the courage to ask you why Americans could not find security and rights under British colonial rule, even though they shared the same ethnic and religious background and were not indigenous to the United States, unlike the people of Artsakh. Given America's history, values, and emphasis on freedom and rights, it seems natural that the United States would support the Artsakh people's struggle to realize their own freedoms and rights in their native land, said Beglarian. Alice Vairi Munoderito, special advisor to the UN Secretary General on the Prevention of Genocide, addressed the UN Human Rights Council on July 4, referring specifically to Armenia and Baku, calling for dialogue and peace and to avoid escalating tensions. Alice Vairi Munoderito recalled the decision of the International Court of Justice of February 22, whose implementation is mandatory, and called for free and safe movement along the Berzor Road. We remind you that according to the court decisions, the blockade of Artsakh and other actions by the Baku authorities must be stopped immediately. Armenia will closely monitor the situation and inform the court of any violations by Baku. The former Foreign Minister of Eastern Armenia, Vartan Oskanya, referring to the recent statements of the U.S. Ambassador to Eastern Armenia, Christina Quinn, announced that if today's authorities give themselves full powers and remain silent, there will be a change in the solution of the Artsakh problem within two or three months. For this, he mentioned three conditions. First, there is no need to sign a document at gunpoint. Second, the demands of Armenia, not just Baku, must be put on the table. Third, when considering the question of status, it must be borne in mind that Artsakh has never been part of Republic and was an autonomous region during the USSR. This must be placed at the heart of the negotiation process and not forgotten. Ararat Mirzoyan, the current Foreign Minister of Eastern Armenia, answering questions about the year's maps to be used for the delimitation and demarcation process and what the Davush enclaves are, replied. First, there is no definitive answer to the question of delimitation and demarcation. Only the Alma Ata declaration is taken into account. Second, the question of enclaves should be resolved by the Delimitation Commission, which has not yet been formed. The government of Western Armenia would like to draw your attention to the fact that neither minister mentioned that Artsakh is not independent. Artsakh is a region of Armenia which existed in 1919 and 1920, is recognized by the USA. No one and no state has the right to make a declaration on behalf of independent Western Armenia. We say the same about Eastern Armenia. Eastern Armenia is a province of the independent and sovereign state of the Armenia by virtue of the Wilson Arbitration Award, which is blinding and has no time limit and has not been annulled to date. The international community knows this and has no right to force anyone to break away or to make its own decisions. The only authority entitled to make a decision is the Republic of Western Armenia. The delegation from the Minister of Foreign Affairs of the Republic of India visited the memorial complex of genocide against Armenians. The guests were welcomed and the history of the creation of the memorial complex was presented by Lucina Abrahamian, Deputy Director of Museum Works at the Museum Institute of the Genocide Perpetrated Against the Armenians. She also referred to the three Hajj cars erected in the Titanagaber territory in memory of the Armenians who died in the massacres organized by the Azerbaijani government in the towns of Sumga. Kirovabad Baku at the end of the last century, and to the stories of the five freedom fighters buried outside Hushabad during the Artsakh War, underlining the link between what happened and the genocide against the Armenians. Members of the Indian delegation laid flowers by the eternal fire and observed a minute silence in the memory of the innocent victims of the genocide against Armenians. Ahead of Sergei Parajanov's 100th birthday on July 4, a press conference was held at the Parajanov Museum on preparation for the Franco-Armenian project Pomegranate Color, a dance performance dedicated to the anniversary. The head of the Modern Art Department of the Ministry of Education, Science, Culture and Sports, Svetlana Sahakian, pointed out that Sergei Parajanov's 100th birthday is included into UNESCO list of anniversary dates. The Armenian-French dance project The Color of Pomegranate will allow not only the international audience but also the Armenian audience to get acquainted with Parajanov's art from a different angle, to understand Parajanov's world through the language of dance. As presented by Sateh Khachatarian, the author of the project and dramaturgical concept, this show will premiere on January 18 and 19, 2024 at the Tobogan Theatre in France and on January 26 at the Gascon Theatre. On March 15 and 16, 2024, the play will be presented in Yerevan. The project is being implemented with the support of two states. Army
Armenia and France. And while the support of the Armenian side is logical, in case of the French side, I'd like to stress that this is the France's state attitude towards Armenian culture. It's another event that strengthens Armenian-French relations, said Sateh Khachatarian, the project's author. I'm happy to have the opportunity to discover Armenia through Sergei Parajanov and his culture. I am sure that our joint work will be a unique dialogue between two cultures, presenting the artist Parajanov in a more complete way, said Murat Merzuki, the choreographer of the performance. Thank you for your time and attention. Now the musical part, the Armenian folk song. 